today I'm just going to tell you how I got started in a creative career, this being my making career, but obviously gardening is also a creative career and the two actually tie in together very well how I started gardening led to how I started making. So when I was younger I grew up surrounded by sort of arts and crafts. I live in West Sussex where arts and crafts is just everywhere. My grandparents are really really arty, both sides, and my mum's really really arty. She's a maker also, she makes silver jewellery and I just found my niche in woodworking and wood carving. How it all started is when I became a gardener, I noticed I was pruning loads of trees, loads of apple trees, and I was getting all this wood, all these off cuts, and I kept having to burn it or tip it, throw it, you know, recycle it, get rid of it somehow, uh, chip it, everything, get it into mulch. And then I realized I could make products from this wood I was getting, um, which is really sustainable and gives this bit of wood a whole new lease of life. And everything surrounding wood carving, you know, is all sort of, organic, it's all recycled, it's all working with tools that just uses human power, you know, there's no electricity, it's all axes and knives, and the wax finish is a beeswax, so it's all natural and it's all from the environment that you live in and work in. Yeah, I noticed I was getting all these bits of wood and I was like, what do I do with them? And I decided to boot, learn to carve spoons because I'd seen on Instagram is all these makers and I was following this aesthetic that was quite like um, wood carvey and all of this, and then I just found this niche of um, using spoons and when I was younger I always used to make stuff you know whatever it was I'd be making something me and my best friend we'd be making silly things like bow and arrows or whistles or we'd always have a pen knife I mean that was the cool thing to have so I sort of fell naturally into whittling and using a knife and wood carving a couple of people I followed that I found really really cool are Barn the Spoon, EJ Osborne and Cliff Knocky Woods um, Barn the Spoon actually has a whole online setup thing where he teaches. He has so many classes and so much to offer. So I self-taught and learned to carve and learned to make these spoons. And this has gone on to make so many different things. I've made like little stools, little bits of furniture, little tables, and I'm just getting better and better. But first off, you know, when you don't have the first few tools, you're a bit nervous and you're worried about how you're gonna make and how it's gonna look. But the whole aspect of it is just being creative. So if you make something out of this wood and you don't like it, you can burn it or repurpose the wood. You know, there's no, end of you know you can always turn it into something new that's how i learned i was self-taught and then i just started making and making and making and learning about knives better knives and all of the wood i now produce from my horticultural business gets turned into something which then goes and lives with someone in their homes or in their sheds outdoors and it becomes a object with a purpose again which is really really exciting and it's so great to see so many people love this thing and it's just come free from the environment and you don't have to be a horticulturist to make your own stuff. You know, if you've got a creative flair, everything's available to you and people have trees everywhere that always need pruning. So if you wanna get into it, it's worth just asking people if they need their trees pruned or going to tree surgeons and they're more than likely to probably sell you some logs or give you some logs from any jobs they have that week or that, that month. Uh, it's such an important heritage craft to learn and it's so exciting to learn a new aspect of it. And I don't think I'll ever stop learning just with horticulture. It's, you know, an ongoing experience and everything, every day I learn something new and learn a new technique and even just making the same spoon like three, four times, you realize that you're doing it wrong the first time or you can save so much time cutting it this way and learning knife safety and all the grips and everything, it's just really fascinating. So it's such a welcoming community. So I've made friends with quite a, quite a lot of people on Instagram. We interact, we share work. I've sent spoons to other people. They've sent me spoons back. So this is the environment you're sort of getting yourself into is a creative community of people that just want to create and share. And there's lots of like spoon gatherings. I've noticed that's the thing. I've not ever been to one um, where you go and you just sit and carve together and whistle together and work and you then share the work at the end of the day, you know, around a bonfire and that sort of classic thing. And uh, you just share the same lifestyle, the same ideas, the same style with like these people around you. And you never feel like you're like isolated or alone, even though it's sort of a sole thing to do, to go and carve wood. You know, it's not a two person job, it's definitely a one person job. But having this amazing community to share this, ta like this skill with is just fantastic. And I will be sharing my work and my skills at an event in August in Brighton. It's the 10th of August at Grand Parade Brighton. Um, it's called Designer, Maker, Artist, Poet. I'll be the maker. 
and there are some really talented people filling the slots of designer, artist and poet and they're hosting um, and showing their work also and they're hosting demonstrations and workshops and I'll be carving the whole day um, and it's just all about arts education, getting younger people into creative careers, showing how viable they are and just showing people that it is an option to do what you love, you know, to do something that you're passionate about that um, it's all about recycling and sustainability and a sort of plastic free world that we're promoting now because everything we're making is all about the future. You know, we want everything to be sustainable and recycled and nothing that will be going to landfill. This exhibition is hosted by the Michael Aldrich Foundation and also showing is some of the Aldrich collection. And these are pieces of work that just illustrate the arts education in Brighton um, for many, many years. They're really exciting pieces. They've been curated by some fantastic people so they're definitely worth coming to see as well. There'll be things to buy, things to do, there'll be raffles, there'll be um, give your own thoughts on things, feedback stations. It's sort of a journey so you come through and you follow um, a path through the exhibition and it's really exciting and I really encourage you to just follow it on social media or follow the hashtag and just see what we're up to in the future because even if you can't make this event, which I'd love you to make, but if you can't make it then we'll be doing so many more things in the future, so many more things involving craft, design and arts for younger people and we really hope to see you there and just giving everything a go because it's all about doing, we're all makers, it's all about making. And if you'd like to come, I really encourage you to register your interest below because we'd love to get a number figure on how many people are coming and how many people are just interested in this movement and these ideas. Um, so I'll put the Eventbrite link in the description along with the other um, makers, I was gonna say, but they're designer, artist, poet, and you can see their work. And I'll also put my Instagram handle so you can see my work before you come along. And just come and show support and just come and have a really good time because it's all about fun and it's gonna be a great Saturday. So I hope to see you there. Thank you.